Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I have here about six topics. The first one, the Kremlin smacks the Polish foreign minister. That is, Russia smacks, uh, as of now, only verbally, Poland. Next time, probably it's going to be with a Sarmat missile or maybe a Tsar bomb. That's the first topic. Second one, how many private military companies uh, are fighting in Ukraine or in Russia on the Western side? Do you know? Oh, we know about the Wagner group being the bad dudes, the mercenaries, but these are, are just, you know, private military companies. I'm going to tell you how many, who's who, what's what, and what the Russians do about it. Next one. Well, 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 my friend, the Hungarian foreign minister, Peter Siarto. He is a ballsy, smart guy and he's Hungarian. Uh, obviously, I'm Romanian born. So anyway, I like the guy very much. His diplomacy and the way he acts with uh, Western weasels. He gives us a piece of information that maybe you were unaware of, which is all of Europe does business with Russia under sanction, sanctions, remember? <laughs> All right, that's, um, that's Mr. Peter Ziarto, Ziarto. Now we have a very concerning news for um, people in general when they limit the freedom of speech and leave, uh, freedom of expression or the freedom of the press. TikTok bans Russia Today and Sputnik, deletes their accounts. But on, this, in the, on the same time, the Telegram channel cooperates with the global, how do they call it, authorities. Now, remember, when they say global authorities, they don't think about, I don't know, Indian authorities or Russian authorities. No, 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 no. Global authorities, our uh, security services, you know, those are. So it seems like Mr. Durov got the message deep inside his butt. Let's put it nicely. So I'm going to discuss that one. The other one, well, 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 Mr. Zelensky Stein, very busy bee. Busy, 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 busy. He has a three point plan for further negotiations with Russia. I thought it's illegal. Well, 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 something changed. You know what changed? They set the stage. They said it's a propaganda move. They said, I'm going to have this three plan for negotiations, which include taking Russia first in front of our. Uh, peace process, peace summit, like peace, pss, that kind of peace summit, all right, where we are going to be the arbiters. And Russia is going to come like a pupil, like a student in front of a, how do you call it, a um, uh, secretary or a uh, uh, principal in a school and say, yes, I'm sorry, yes, what do you say, Romania? My bad, Albania, yeah, uh, United States, yeah, yeah, thank you. And the Russians will do exactly that. Why? Because they can use their claws, their paws, the bear, and then fuck them all up. But somehow they will come over there in front of Zelensky and say, yes, Mr. Zelensky Stein, what do you want? Tell us. You want my country again? Like you had in uh, 1918? <laughs> you know what I mean? 1918? The Russian Revolution? That was not the Russian Revolution. The Russian Revolution was a few months earlier. They were hijacked by the guys from the West, from outside, with their Bolshevik Revolution. Mr. Bronstein, right? Is that how it was his name? Aka Trotsky. Uh, and then you have Lenin, again, another Russian. And many others, like Stalin, another Russian. So all these guys took over. That was not a Russian, because they didn't have Russians in their leadership. Too many others, foreigners. Oh. Sorry. All right, let's move. Move on. Uh, Russia Today. Russia publishes destructive neoliberal countries list. That is, if you guys feel, how do you call that, discriminated, politically discriminated in your country or anything like that, you can apply for uh, asylum, political asylum to Russia. This used to be the other way around, where we from the Eastern Europe or other countries where politically we were allowed, given by the free world to Stalin and his uh, killers. That's what they were. We were given by the free world. Why? They divided the world into like Adana guy said, well, how about we do it? I'm going to allow you to have your colonies and we go, I'm going to have Europe. You're going to have that. Remember that guy? All right. But uh, 
he attacked the wrong people. So what do, and, and that's not the Soviets or the Russians, it's something else. It's their ideology coming from Mr. Karl Marx, a son of a rabbi, of a preacher man. <laughs> can make shit up. So I'm going to give you the, the list of this neoliberal garbage with a beautiful picture that would really, really show you what these guys mean. So if you feel that in your country and you can't fight it, which I suggest you stay there and you f fight it. Why? Because we're not losing. I mean, it's the fight is just beginning. It shows up because they kept us, you know, like sleeping or maybe kept you. But nevertheless, that's why one day Romania probably will see me coming back to do something over there. Let's move on. Let's start the first with the first article. Kremlin blasts Crimea proposal. Russian territory is not up for discussion, spokesman Dmitry Peskov has said. Now you know what happened a few days of the, oh, a few days ago. Sikorsky, Vladislav, Vladislav, the foreign minister of Poland showed up in Kiev and told Zelensky Stein, the Ukrainian, that actually in the Ukrainian, uh, Crimea should be, you know, held by a referendum, uh, by United Nations mandate uh, after 20 years, and then have a little referendum after they cleanse Crimea of the Russian people, and then they should vote, like in Kosovo. Oh, in Kosovo they didn't vote; it was the parliament who decided. Ma bad, they voted over there. Anyway, so when he said that. Uh, some Ukrainians said, Stokazalish, which is, what are you talking about? And then they said, what are you talking about? And now the Russians say, and the Russians did the same thing I did in the previous video regarding my Polish friends. Oh, let's talk about Gdansk then. But, the, but Peskov gives us more than Gdansk. And you're going to see how he smacks them. And what are the Poles going to do? Call the master of puppets. All right, Moscow has reacted strongly to a Polish suggestion to place Crimea under UN administration for 20 years. No Russian territory is up for discussion, President Vladimir Putin's spokesman Dmitry Peskov has said in response to the proposal. And I'm quoting, Russian territory and Russian regions cannot be the subject of any discussions or transfer of, to anyone. He said, the idea is absurd. The historically Russian peninsula was reassigned to Ukraine in 1954 by Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev, wasn't he half Ukrainian, and was claimed by Kiev after the declaration of independence in 1991 and allowed by the weak traitors of Russia at that time. Polish Foreign Minister Radislav Sikorsky on Thursday floated the notion of making Crimea a UN mandate territory like the Middle East and then give it to someone else, uh, some people's land, give it to some you know the story, you are witnessing right now the consequences, describing it a, as, and I'm calling symbolically important for Russia. That's what it is. And I'm calling strategically important for Ukraine. According to Sikorsky, the United Nations mission could prepare the territory for a referendum in up to 20 years. I told you why in 20 years, so they have time to <laughs> clean the... <clears throat> Once it determines who would be legally eligible residents. <laughs> Tra -la -la -la. Okay, the Ukrainian foreign minister also publicly rejected the proposal, insisting that Ukraine's territory integrity cannot be a subject of discussion or compromise. Okay, they tell us is there, here the residents of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol voted overwhelmingly to rejoin Russia in March 2014, shortly after the Maidan coup overthrew the Ukrainian government in favor of military nationalists with the help of um, the free world. They threw a overthrow a democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych for some guys who took over through a coup, a uh, insurrection. <laughs> January 6th, they call that insurrection, that garbage. Oh my God. All right, Kiev has continued to claim Crimea. Parara, parara. Now, Crimeans returned to Russia a decade ago and have no need for Western medals such as Sikorsky. Don't consider Sikorsky a Western medal. They want to consider himself Western, but anyway. Uh, like the Romanians, they are not a Western, they are just, you know, copiers. Russian lawmaker Leonid Ivlev told reporters on Friday the retired Air Force Major General proposed to put Western Poland under UN mandate instead. So listen up, my Polish friends, what this piss off <laughs> there's to say. Crimea, and I'm quoting, is historically and rightfully Russian territory. We live on our own land, Ivlev said. And I'm calling, quoting again, the Poles can't say, can't say the same. Sikorsky should remember that Prussia, Silesia, 
Pomerania, East Brandenburg and the free city of Danzig, that I only refer to, were transferred to Poland by the Georgian Stalin, not by the Russian Stalin, the Soviet criminal, right? Maybe we should put these former German lands under a UN mandate and then hold a referendum there, he suggested. Following the defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945, Poland received former German territories up to the oder Nice line as compensation for chatting to the USSR, the lands it had seized in 1920s. Those territories become part of the present-day Lithuania, Belarus and Ukraine. I know, oh, 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 time out, time out. I know my Polish friends and many others will say, well, no, that's not the interpretation. It's more to that. It's true. It's true. So why don't you just sit, sit quietly over there and don't try to meddle in other people's business? Because you're not pure. As no country is pure, right? They all had their garbage, regardless how small it is. So here, just back off. Make, make sure you're going to get Lviv when the Ukrainians lose. You're going to intervene over there for, you know, safekeeping and protecting the Polish minority and ancestral lands of Poland, remember, and Lithuania. And keep quiet. But hey, you want to talk? These guys are going to smear you with the same shit you smear them. If you think that you're 100% wrong, I think you're, um, I don't know. Let's move on. Let's get to the second article. Uh, if you think that you're 100% right. Is that what I said? I said wrong. Sputnik. What is known about US private military companies? Let's see. Members of American private military company, PMC. The Forward Observations Group, FOG took part in the Ukrainian military incursion in Russia's Kursk region, according to evidence that recently re surfaced. So that means if you're located in America or America is part of the war, no, but yes, because we're going to find out that these PMCs are very much in cahoots with the US government. The FOG PMC has also delivered weapons to Ukraine and allegedly assisted the country's forces in coordinating and delivery of toxic chemicals to the Donetsk People's Republic for potential sabotage. This is what these guys claim. Sputnik has looked into how US PMCs are operating. PMCs are often led by high-ranking Pentagon, CIA and State Department retirees. Well, you don't want uh, people from the bazaar to be in charge of your country. Oh, wait, we have uh, Zelensky. Oh, my sorry, I'm, I'm bad. Okay, units are comprised of ex-servicemen with experience, former special forces officers with experience, gra graduates of military academies and foreign mercenaries. The Pentagon's facilities in San Diego, California, Mount Carroll, Illinois and Mayok, North Carolina, or Moyok, are used for training. Salaries reportedly range from $400 to $600 a day. Some operatives get $1,000 daily. What do you think for that? Isn't this the Mike Price? Is that how his name is? Isn't it? Blackwater? Eric Price. I'm sorry. Eric Price. Oh, yeah. The Defense Department, State Department and intelligence agencies are the main customers of PMCs with contracts worth over $50 million requiring approval from Congress. The US is not a signatory to the International Convention against the recruitment, use, financing and training of mercenaries and uses PMCs in, to, in circumvention of national legislative restrictions. So you don't follow that we want a rule based world order, but you know, we stay outside of certain kind of uh, authorities, uh, all right, or jurisdictions that we don't like, but we want everybody else to be under that jurisdiction. Like we want uh, ICC to have jurisdiction all over this planet except us. Why? Because we're strong. But the same thing the Russians claim, the same thing the Chinese, but no, it can be only one. Remember? Now, let's go and move. Further, the State Department uses the Arms Export Control Act to indirectly regulate American PMC's services, including advising and assisting foreign defense departments in reforming their armed forces, creating parliamentary formations, paramilitary, parliamentary, yes, paramilitary formation, as well as saboteur and militant detachments, coordinating their actions, providing training missions, reconnaissance, logistics, transport and technical support, security for diplomatic staff, commercial organizations, strategic US facilities abroad, including oil fields and pipelines, such of those, those plundered in Syria and Iraq, correct, where the US main, maintains troops illegally in 
Syria. In Iraq, they, those guys were already bought. And oversight for prisons. The PM is active in Ukraine according to the Russian Foreign Ministry. Now, Academy, formerly Blackwater, part of Constellius Group, which had around 400 personnel in Ukraine until 2022, according to German media. The German media, these guys have 400 personnel. Uh, Dean Corp International, which offers sabotage and sniper training, Cubic Corporation, providing reconnaissance assistance using satellites and drones, operated, opened an offi office in Ukraine in 2015 after the coup. According to existing data, some 3,000 mercenaries are fighting on the side of Kiev regime, with at least 300 of them employees of US PMCs. You got that? All right. Remember when they were crying about the Wagner Group? But hey, those that are their mercenaries, ours or theirs, are just, you know, good people uh, delivering flowers and candies to the kids. Next one. Let's see how Mr. Pisser, P Pisser, Peter Sciarto uh, smacks these guys. Right here. All of Europe does business with Russia, Hungary said. EU economic cooperation with Moscow continues despite the sanctions. Foreign Mr. Peter Sciarto has said. Great guy right there. And I'm quoting. Here I would like to disappoint the idealists, as the situation is that everyone in Europe is doing this, Giarto said. The difference between us and the others in general is that we speak honestly and openly about this issue. All of Europe does business with the Russians, but some deny this. We don't need that. Applauding this guy. I, tell, I, I give you three to four diplomats that are diplomats. Peter Sciarto is one of them, uh, Sergei Lavrov is the second one, and Dr. Jay Shankar of India is the third one. And if you want Wang Yi of China, you can introduce him over there. But you know what the problem is? These guys are the bad guys. And they play for the other team, for the bad guys team. And it was another one that I followed. It was the uh, Iranian, oh my God, another dream team here. Iranian foreign minister when uh, Iran signed with the Europe and the Americans and the Americans off the nuclear deal. I can remember his name. He was supposed to be, I think right now, again, a, uh, not president, prime minister, foreign minister, something else, again in uh, Iran. That's another guy. I watched him in interviews. I watched his, I listened to his statements. Logic, how do you call it, class, and uh, intelligence, knowledge versus Berbok, Annalena Berbok, Annalena, blah, 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 blah. not even for that. Uh, what? Uh, remember, we have uh, what was her name? Uh, uh, the British one, the English one that I made fun all the time on, on her Strass, Strass, whatever her was name was, remember? That was a prime minister for a short period of time. Uh, Lizzie, Lindsay, Lizzie Strass, whatever it was named. Again, another one. Blinken, another one. And these are foreign ministers. These are... And they are ours, playing our teams. How about we catapult them to the bad guys and we get the real ones? All right, let's move on. TikTok. TikTok is uh, partially owned by a Chinese company, but it seems like they have to do what the Americans are telling them. Sputnik. TikTok wipes out Sputnik accounts. The US Department of the Treasury issued a statement on September 4 announcing sanctions against Sputnik's parent media group, Rosia Segodnia, Ria Novosti, Russia Today, Sputnik, and Rup Ruptlai. I don't know, Ruptlai. The sanctions also targeted pa -pa 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 -pa. on the morning of September 21st, the video sharing platform TikTok removed the Sputnik International account of the Sputnik News Network just days after the US announced new sanctions against tar targeting Russian media. The Americans are doing the same thing everywhere else. They infiltrate and have access. But when our enemies do the same thing, but, and they claim they do it in the name of keeping safe and freedom of speech and uh, freedom of the, uh, of the press, when, when those guys are doing something better, Instead of saying, oh, okay, maybe we just uh, become better, you know, like a product in, in capitalism. No, we ban them. How? Through our government. That's why they do it. So if tomorrow you're in, in the market over there and you go somewhere and you have a better product than the next guy over there, and the next guy knows the guy in charge of the market, he's gonna, they're going to ban you, ban your product. That's for, therefore, eliminated competition, not 
trying to think, how is this guy doing better than me? What the hell is he doing? No, it's going to go to the government and the government will ban you. Therefore, I'm going to have the monopoly. Good job, like the EVs, you know, electrical vehicles. You give 7,400 tax uh, incentives, which is giving from the same guys, for buying an EV, but not a combustion engine a car. Therefore, I think this is uh, unfair competition, regulated by the government, through the government. So, thank you very much. Uh, capitalism and democracy and freedom of speech and all these beautiful words. Next one. Russia Today, TikTok deletes Russia Today and Sputnik accounts. The move comes after the US imposed sanctions on several Russian media outlets. You got it? You can't see it. So you can't see it anymore. Video sharing has deleted accounts of Russia International and several branches of Sputnik Media Network. On Saturday morning, the accounts of Russia Today International, Sputnik Serbia, Sputnik Afrika, Sputnik Africa, Sputnik International, Sputnik Brazil, Sputnik Mundo, and Sputnik Indonesia became Indonesia, Indonesians <laughs> became inaccessible. TikTok has not yet comment, commented on the development. Sputnik Serbia has shared an image showing a query saying it could not find the account. I saw that in Romania with Russia Today when I went over there. Uh, hey, but this guy cooperates. It's interesting. Look at this. Telegram cooperates with global authorities, with the Russians too. So when they say global authorities or the, when they say public opinion or the world's opinion, they refer to the United States government and maybe two more weasels. Everybody else know. I have to remind you. They're about remind you. This is about 194, sometimes 193 countries. That's the global opinion, the public opinion. It's not a few countries. Again, global authorities, they, they say our Western services, intelligence services. If they say, okay, that means they cooperate with the Russians. Okay, do you think they will say, yeah, or with the Chinese? No. So that's why you see how misleading the title is from the very beginning. Besides the fact that Durov got the message. He just wants to get out of France. When he gets out of France, maybe he's going to dare to do something else, which I strongly doubt. Why? He's young, he's a billionaire, multi-billionaire. Why does he care? Well, he's got ladies and all that. Well, I mean, oh, you say, well, he's more sophisticated. We'll see. Time will see. When he leaves, be why? Because he's not going to be able to run far away from the arm of these guys. And they will ban it, like TikTok banned Russia Today, for instance. The same. They will ban Telegram's access. Like, for instance, Ukraine just did it for the governmental uh, uh, employees. All right, so let's see what these guys do. At least he's smiling, very happy right there. After Durov's arrest. For Russian intelligence, this is very bad. Okay, we fight them. It's a complete failure. On September, what, what exactly? The cooperation with the Americans and the French and all these guys? Yeah, so it's a fight. It, uh, it's a war, obviously. You know, it's a war. And uh, I don't like when they put the clock, clock of we are moral, we are the free countries, uh, we have these values, the Western enlightened garbage values nowadays. And uh, we do this and we protect your freedom of speech and all that. But in the meantime, you limit uh, my ability to be, I don't know, propagandized by who the fuck ever I want. If I'm a free person. If I'm not, then someone else, another person who supposedly as, is as free as I am, who tells me what I can, what I cannot watch or look at. Or, I don't know, get light. Like you have, you know, in your relationships. Have you been in relationships? I hope you were. So, uh, there's some people who like to be lied all the time. So, oh, you look very good. Oh, shit. oh that, the match is great. Uh, all right. Oh, your hair is fantastic. Oh, the way you dance. You remember Elaine from St. Field, how she danced? Oh, you dance just, just very nice. So, same here. We are the same here. They would like to be lied, but they, they, are, they think they are the shit. They're not. I don't like that. I like to tell you the, state, the, the way it is. If you don't like it, then you're not my friend. The same here. Durov, what do you think Durov is going to do? Yes, sir. And that's it. But now these guys take over because what we do to you, we blame the other one doing to you. So the Russians intelligence through Telegram, now we get in and we get them out. I mean, if rape is bad, it's bad if your dad did it, did it or my dad does it. Correct? Correct. But here is no. If his dad does that, uh, if my dad does it, right there on balls. Anyway, let's move on. Let's go to the Zelensky Stein again. 
Ukraine prepares three-point plan for further negotiations with Russia. Zelensky, look at this. Dun, 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 dun. Look at this brave guy. Okay, so he first, first thing. What do you mean further negotiations? I thought you don't, you don't want to negotiate. Oh, something changed. And this is what they do. They are going to say, do what I said they will do. I said this before. They set a stage. Remember when you have someone telling you, hey, Mike, um, you're, you're, you're kind of good at painting. Yeah, you're kind of good. Or you're, you, you know, you, your, your poem is kind of good. That means that this guy is in charge of you. He, in, that means he knows what he's talking about and he's assessing your abilities. You understand? So when I invite you to my peace summit, that means I'm in charge of you. So these guys are setting a stage for Russia showing up in front of the five, ten countries picked by them, which is the guys who are responsible for ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, okay, unprovoked war in Ukraine. And they will be the ones looking down on poor Russia because Russia is poor, right? And, and these guys are gonna they are going to decide. They self-appointment. Why? Because they are the free world. But they are the ones who made Russia attack Ukraine unprovoked. All right. So this is what basically is happening here. Presidential advisor Dmitry Litvien clarified that one of the news agencies incorrectly reported Zelensky's remarks explaining that the discussions were about online meeting with representatives of countries supporting the peace formula. Meetings have already taken place regarding three points of the peace formula and additional online and offline meetings will be held to discuss the points of the peace formula. These meetings aim to develop elements to the document that will be presented at the second peace summit. And Russia was not invited. And now they come around and say, obviously, which was not obvious uh, a few months ago, there were, there were and could not be Russian representatives at those meetings. They, right? they were and they could not be. Why? Why? But note that adding that both online and offline meetings will continue and they will come around. We have indicated that we are ready to see Russia at the second summit, which is our summit. We set it up. If Russia tom tomorrow sets up a summit with India, Brazil, uh, I don't know, China and Iran and North Korea, do you think Ukraine will show up? No, because they are bad people. Because all our allies, including our closest partners who are on our side and always oppose Russian aggression, have said that Russia must be pre present at the second summit because Russia is at war with Ukraine. The, the war cannot end without one of the parties being present. Didn't I say that over and over again? What happened then in the first one? You didn't invite it and Russia said, I'm not going to show up with your little shit show. Why? I'm too strong. I'm going to fuck you all up and you're going to get a bloody nose for getting me to get in this garbage. We could have discussed this as I, we want it, as I want it, in 2021, in December, and November, and October, and January 2022, but you didn't want to. You said, what are you going to do? Bang! Round. Okay? And now it's too late, baby doll. I'm not going to swim halfway, get tired, and go back. Because the halfway can go the other side. So the Russians will not show up over there unless they're imbeciles. If they show up, it's either they're imbeciles, and I know they're not, or these guys are together. It's a higher game over there, and they speak, and they will you know, negotiate and they will give. I don't think the Russians, if that would be the case, I think Putin will be hanged by his balls uh, uh, in the Red Square. But hey, let's see Russia's destructive neoliberal countries list. Here you have it. Russia publishes destructive neoliberal country and right here, beautiful picture. This is the future. These are going to pay for your pension, my friend. These guys right here, once this cooperates with me. Right there, beautiful daughter, or whatever she fucking is, right there. There she is. This is supposedly uh, the progressive movement. This, this right here. What the hell are you? All right, and it's a child over there. And is that, uh, how do you call it, uh, child abuse? No? All right. So here we have it. Dissidents from the listed states can now petition Moscow for residency. Moscow has listed 47 Ronins. Remember the Ronins? Yeah, and the 48th. Remember the 48th? 
okay, whose destructive attitudes contradict Russian values, opening a path for their, their nationals to seek asylum in Russia if they so choose. Well, that's an opening for infiltration as well. So you're going to make sure that you vet them very well. President Putin signed a decree last month allowing foreigners who share Russia's traditional values and disagree with a neoliberal agenda pushed by their own governments to apply for residency. On Friday, Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Mitsushin published a list of countries and territories that implement policies that impose destructing neoliberal ideology and attitudes contradicting traditional European spiritual and moral values. I said Europeans, even though I should use different kind because these guys hijacked the Western Europe hijacked the European values. The European values were ancient Greek and ancient Roman and then a little bit of that garbage that oozed in Europe. You know what it is? All right. Unfortunately. So and they hijacked it and now they they just changing it. It's just a metamorphosis into something that is we can't let that happen. All right, let's move and see the countries. The list on the Russian government portal includes the following countries and territories right there. Australia, Austria, Albania, Andorra, the Bahamas. By the Bahamas, Belgium, Bulgaria, the UK, Germany, Greece, UK, what UK, what do you have over there? You don't have the, the anyway, Greece, Denmark, Ireland, Iceland, Spain, Italy, Canada. Oh, dangerous Canada. They don't have Canadians anymore over there. They have something else. Cyprus, Latvia, Lithuania, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Malta, Micronesia. Why Micronesia? Monaco. <laughs> You're gonna get uh, Prince Ranier. The Netherlands, the New Zealand, uh, Norway, Poland, Portugal, South Korea, uh, Romania. We are there. <laughs> San Marino, North Macedonia, Macedonia, Singapore, the US, Taiwan. Ukraine, Finland, France, Croatia, Montenegro, the Czech Republic, Switzerland, Sweden, Estonia, and Japan. Hey, where is Hungary? Did I see Hungary over there? Oh, ah. notably absent from the list are EU and NATO members, Slovakia and Hungary, as well as NATO member Turkey. Why? Because these guys are, they don't need to because they are having the values, I'm assuming. Most of the designated countries previously made the register of unfriendly governments, first compiled in the spring of 2021 and updated in 2022. The states on the blacklist are subject to Russia's diplomatic and economic countermeasures based on the hostile conduct. Russia can offer the world a safe haven for normalcy. End quote. By defining traditional values, defending, I'm sorry, from the wokeism catastrophe and has come to dominate the collective West. RT editor said that. Oh, well, my friends, I think the list is good, good for them, but don't do it in an idiotic way. That's a little advice for the Russians, because what you're going to accept coming in, uh, they could change your culture in a little time. Um, remember, diversity is not a strength. Is not a strength. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.